Peter, we have to stop meeting like this. Once again, you've released a video on YouTube talking about energy policy, this time about nuclear power, and it's just filled with boneheaded inaccuracies that could have been corrected if you'd spent five minutes on Google. This time the title is, Is Chinese Nuclear Tech Better Than the U.S.? He talks about both nuclear power and nuclear weapons, but I'm only going to talk about nuclear power because, unlike Peter Zion, I don't talk about stuff I know nothing about. There have been reports recently that the United States is falling behind China when it comes to nuclear technology. And what are my general thoughts on that? Uh, first of all, uh, let's start about the places where the Chinese are doing very well. It primarily has to do with nuclear power generation and especially the deployment of new nuclear power facilities. Since 1973, with the Three Mile Island plant, the United States has really only built one nuclear facility. And one of the ongoing issues that they faced was talent and labor. When you don't build a new nuclear power facility for, you know, 50 a year, not a lot of people go into that business nerd. So they're having to reinvent a few skill sets and go after former Navy nuclear engineers, people who worked on submarines, for example, uh, in order to fill out the ranks. And that is very, very expensive. Zion is correct when he talks about the issues of the U.S.'s long pause in building nuclear power plants. It's not just the labor force, but, but the entire supply chain needed to build anything of this complexity is almost non-existent. But do please keep in mind that the type of nuclear reactors that are being used in both places are typically light water reactors, uh, and the technology behind those dates back literally to the 1950s. So yes, the Chinese now are developing a much more robust and redundant labor force than the United States has for a 1950s and 1960s technology. But that's not the same to say that they're getting ahead. Um, that's a different topic. And while most of the Chinese reactors use the same basic architecture as the majority of nuclear power plants built around the world, that is, light water pressurized reactors, that's like saying an internal combustion engine car from 2024 is the same as a Buick from the 1950s. The new car and the new reactor have safety features like anti-lock braking and passive cooling that make the new version better, if not fundamentally different. And China is moving away from the old school light water reactors. They are building two fast neutron sodium cooled reactors that should generate about 700 megawatts each. They see this design as the future of nuclear power in China. Uh, if, if, if the United States decides to get back into nuclear generated power, the way to do it is probably going to be something called small modular reactors. Now, the upside of a large nuclear facility is it can generate more than a gigawatt in a single place, which is enough to power a lot of cities, for example. Um, the problem is, of course, with the light water reactor technology, you can have a meltdown. That's basically a, a light version of what happened at Three Mile Island. Chernobyl, of course, is the more infamous familiar or Fukushima in Japan. Uh, and so people generally don't like to have those things near their cities. That's the primary reason why the United States hasn't built any in so long. We're with China, where public support is less of a concern and public safety is even less, you know, they're building them like mad. The advantage of a small modular reactor is that it basically fits on the back of a truck and you can plug it into an existing system like say at a decommissioned coal plant uh, and you can move them around, they're mobile, uh, to wherever they need it. Zion's description of a small modular reactor is odd. They are smaller, producing less than 300 megawatts of power or about a quarter of that of a typical nuclear plant. But they aren't mobile, unless you count the ones on aircraft carriers and subs. The idea is that you can build the critical components at a central factory and ship the modules out to the site. You still need to connect it to a steam turbine and a bunch of other support equipment. So the complete facility doesn't fit on a truck, just the core element. Even if that was possible, there's no way the Nuclear Regulatory Commission is allowing anyone to build mobile nuclear reactors. Also, many small modular reactor concepts are still light water reactors. The difference is the size, not the architecture. Also, SMRs are not inherently safer than modern full-size reactors. Both have passive systems that should make them very safe from meltdowns. Finally, the idea of replacing a coal boiler with a nuclear plant is a good one, 
but you can do that with an SMR or a standard nuclear plant. Uh, there was a company a year or two ago that I was watching pretty closely that was trying to get into that space, but last November the contracts fell apart and it's basically back to the drawing board in many ways. There are some other companies that are working on it, but none of them I think are in a position where, where they might have a working prototype within the next three to five years. And if that's the situation, you're not going to have mass manufacture of the technology within a decade. So it's interesting, but it's not really going anywhere. The company is new scale, and they have definitely hit a bump. But they're still around. Here's a vision of their power plant. Not something that would fit on a truck. It uses 12 of their modules, each generating 77 megawatts. New Scale's design is a light water reactor with passive cooling, making it safe by design. And to my knowledge, the Chinese aren't pushing in that direction because they are perfectly capable of ignoring safety constraints and public relations constraints and just proceeding with the big stuff. Uh, there's also the possibility of going with what's called a fourth generation reactor that uses a pebble bed. The French are working on that, but again, we're not to the point yet where we have a functional prototype. So it's too soon to draw any conclusions there. And even if the prototype's perfect, you're talking about 2035 to 2040 before any real construction gets going. In 2023, the Chinese started commercial operations of a 200 megawatt small modular reactor that is a pebble bed reactor that uses helium as a coolant. So the Chinese have a working SMR. And the safety record of the Chinese nuclear fleet is fine. There's no question that we can't just take the Chinese Communist Party's word for it, but a major nuclear accident is something we would detect. The reason the Chinese are going with the big stuff is that it's more economical. It's cheaper to build one big plant than four small ones. Another interesting development that Zion didn't mention is the Bill Gates-funded natrium plant that's under construction in Wyoming. This plant uses sodium as a coolant like the most modern Chinese plants. In other words, the Chinese are ahead of basically everyone in the world on nuclear power. There are some interesting developments in the U.S., so there's a chance of the revival of the industry, but I wouldn't bet on it even if Bill Gates is. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe.